I want to talk today about these air defense systems Ukraine has announced it received from the West. They're talking about the NASEMS, Norwegian or National Advanced Surface to Air Missile System. It fires what is called an advanced medium range air to air missile, AMRAM. These are missiles that are already used by Western warplanes to down enemy aircraft, air to air. Uh, so it will use that same missile in a surface to air role for air defense. It has a shorter range than Ukraine's S-300 system, which has been disappearing off the battlefield. Russia has been destroying them. They are breaking down. They are running out of interceptor missiles. And there's nothing Ukraine can do to uh, fix them or replace them or build new interceptor missiles. Not anytime soon. And so what's happening is, as their air defense systems that they started out with at the end of February disappear, they're being replaced by inferior Western systems, inferior in quantity and inferior in performance. It doesn't even look like the West is even considering giving Ukraine an air defense system that can match or exceed the S-300 specifications. So let's take a look at this Reuters article. Ukraine receives first delivery of NASEM's air defense systems. The article says Ukraine has received the first delivery of NASEM's air defense systems, which will significantly strengthen its armed forces. Defense Minister Reznikov said on Monday, White House National Security Council spokesperson John Kirby said last month, the United States was accelerating the shipment of sophisticated NASEM systems to Ukraine after a devastating missile barrage from Russia. Look who's here, NASEMS and ESPADE air defense systems arrived in Ukraine. And there's an exclamation point. This is a tweet uh, Rez Reznikov put out on the Telegram messaging app, thanking Norway, Spain, and the United States for the shipments. These weapons will significantly strengthen Ukrainian army and will make our sky safer. Is that true? Is this going to make Ukraine's airspace safer? I think I've already kind of alluded to the fact that no, it's not going to, but I'll get into all of that in just a moment. I want to show you what this NASEM system looks like, and I want to go to Kongsberg's website. This is the Norwegian company that jointly produces this alongside Raytheon. And if you scroll down, you're gonna see some pictures of it, but this is the, the whole system right here. So you have the actual launcher, there's a separate radar system, there's a control unit and other sensors. How, how many did Ukraine get? Reuters doesn't say, Reznikov doesn't say. It's, it's either one or two and, and no more. There's a very tiny amount of these systems slated to go to Ukraine at all. And, uh, and again, I'm going to get into all of that. I want to show you something else, though. There's this, I don't know what it is, a, a brochure of some sort that you can download from uh, their website, Kongsberg's website. And you see this picture, network-centric air defense system. Well, Ukraine is never going to have this many NASEM systems. They will never have this many. And so this, this is a, a, a benefit of the system that you can network them together and they can all talk to each other and they can see an incoming uh, target and they can decide which one is in a better position to, to fire an optimal shot with the best chances of intercepting the incoming target. Ukraine's not going to be able to do this. They're going to be getting one or two now and then it'll be a, a, another couple of months before they get additional ones and then years before they get the rest of them. They're never going to have enough on the battlefield to network together. They're going to try to use these uh, standalone to try to take down targets, Russian targets, incoming cruise missiles, aircraft, drones. And every time they turn them on, Russia is going to see that they are on. And eventually they're going to formulate a plan knowing where they're operating in, the area they're operating in. They're going to develop an operation to target and destroy them just like they've been destroying all of Ukraine's other air defense systems, which is why Ukraine is asking the West to send additional systems in the first place. So you can see the problem that's developing here.
the West cannot send these air defense systems faster than they're being destroyed, which means eventually Ukraine is going to be at a point where it does not have a credible air defense system on the battlefield, and therefore Russian air power is going to be able to operate with relative impunity. And I can hear you saying, Brian, you're a Putin propagandist. Of course, you would say something like that. But I, I want to show you how this is not actually me drawing this conclusion or me citing Russian media. This is actually Western analysts saying this. So uh, something else the Reuters article mentioned was this. The Royal United Services Institute, a London-based defense think tank, said in a report on Monday that Ukraine needed modern Western equipment and ammunition to defend itself from missile and drone attacks. The West must avoid complacency about the need to urgently bolster Ukrainian air defense capacity, Rusi said. So they're talking about this report here, the Russian air war and Ukrainian requirements for air defense. And it says a whole lot more than what Reuters claims it said. And this is what the Western media does. They take these little bits and pieces out of context. If you actually read the whole report, it creates a completely different picture of what's going on. And so I'm going to tell you what, what else the report said. But first of all, I just want to point out that Rusi is funded by, by the US government, by European governments, and by Western arms manufacturers. If, if you go to their funding website, you can see that. You could also see uh, quite a few arms manufacturers, Western arms manufacturers fund them. So this is, this is most certainly a, a Western source. This is not Russian propaganda. The report provides a timeline of how the, the air battle has taken place from, from the beginning opening days in late February to where we are right now. They talk about how Russian warplanes are firing missiles at standoff distances. That means they stay out of range of potential Ukrainian air defense systems. And they fire a missile that goes past these air defense systems and hits their targets. And this is to preserve the, the lives of Russian pilots and their warplanes. And this is something that US and Israeli warplanes are doing in Syria because Syria, like Ukraine, has a large number of effective Soviet-era air defense systems. It's, a, it's an irony that Russia's military aviation is limited in Ukraine because of Soviet-era air defense systems. They're being so effective. Now, the report also says, without air superiority, Russia's attempts at strategic air attack have been limited to expensive cruise and ballistic missile barrages at a much more limited scale. These failed to achieve strategically decisive damage during the first seven months of the invasion. However, the latest iteration is a more focused and sustainable bombardment of the Ukrainian electric electricity grid, blending hundreds of cheap Iranian-supplied Shahed-136 loitering munitions against substations with continued use of cruise and ballistic missiles against larger targets. So that's that's one problem. Ukraine's air defense systems might be keeping Russian mili manned military aviation at arm's distance, but they seem in incapable of stopping these Garan-2 drones that Russia is using to dismantle Ukrainian infrastructure, the, the electric grid. So that this, this means that Russia can continue doing this and they don't, they don't really need to use that many cruise missiles or ballistic missiles. I think they're talking about Iskander missiles and they don't have to risk losing any of their manned military aviation assets. But there's another problem, uh, and this is the part that Reuters partially quoted in their article. It says, the West must avoid complacency about the need to urgently bolster Ukrainian air defense capacity. It is purely thanks to its failure to destroy Ukraine's mobile SAM systems that Russia remains unable to effectively employ the potentially heavy and effective aerial firepower of its fixed-wing bomber and multi-role fighter fleets to bombard Ukrainian strategic targets and frontline positions from medium altitude as it did in Syria. And it did that very effectively in Syria, I might add. It follows that if Ukrainian SAMs are not resupplied with ammunition and ultimately augmented and replaced with Western equivalents over time, the Russian Air Force will regain the ability to pose a major threat 
So that means Russia won't, will not only continue dismantling Ukrainian infrastructure using these Garan-2 drones, they'll also be able to eventually bring in all of their manned military aviation also, just like I said uh, in the beginning. So this is a, a really large problem, this US, European government funded and, and arms industry funded think tank has laid out. And the solution, providing it uh, Western air defense systems to replace their, their diminishing number of Soviet era air defense systems, that sounds like a great idea on paper, but is that an actual solution? The answer is no. And we know that because there are other Western U.S. government, European government, and Western corporate funded think tanks uh, also explaining all of this. So this is the Center for Strategic and International Studies, CSIS. Can the United States do more for Ukrainian air defense? And this was from October, so last month. And it says, as Russian missiles pummel Ukrainian cities, the Ukrainian government has pleaded for additional air defense systems to protect its people. The United States and NATO have responded positively with Secretary of Defense Lloyd J. Austin citing the need in his NATO press conference. That need is growing as the Russians increasingly use Iranian supplied kamikaze drones to attack military and civilian targets. Unfortunately, turning good intentions into battlefield realities will be difficult. The United States has already provided many air defense systems, including Stingers, the National Advanced Surface to Air Missile System, NASIMS, and S-300s, but is nearly out of equipment to provide. Recent DOD statements on air defense recognize the problem, but do not announce any new US actions, because as they will explain, there's nothing they can do. Austin pointed to the Europeans as a primary source of help in this area. The Europeans are stepping up, but they can provide only small numbers of systems in the near term. In the longer term, the United States and Europe will provide systems from new production, but those will take years to arrive. What CSIS is saying is that the West has more or less sent everything that they have that they can afford to give, that is practical to give Ukraine. They have already sent it and nothing on any large scale is left to send to Ukraine. And, and these systems that they're developing and building will not be ready for years. So it is essentially Ukraine running out of air defense assets. And Russia knows this, they know this, they're waiting. They're waiting for this to run its full course. Now, the CSIS piece goes over one by one all of the different systems that the West has available to them. And they explain, uh, you know, how they've either sent these already or why they can't send these. And so a system like the Patriot missile system, for example, it says Patriot would be well suited for post-war reconstruction of the Ukrainian military. However, because training operators and establishing a maintenance system would take years, it would not be suitable for near-term transfer. They're not sending Patriot missile systems to Ukraine unless Americans are going to man them, essentially. And then on the NASAMs that Ukraine is boasting about receiving, this is what it says. The United States is committed to providing eight, only eight of these systems, but only two will come from existing stocks. The other six will come from new production and take years, with an S, years to arrive. About four other countries have the system with a few others awaiting deliveries because of the production backlogs and limited fielding to date. Few systems will be available or transfer to Ukraine. So there's just gonna be a tiny handful of these that arrive. They will not arrive in large enough numbers to even network a small number of them together, which means they will be more vulnerable to uh, Russian efforts to eliminate them before additional systems arrive because there's so much time in between these systems arriving. So there you go. Uh, all of this information coming from Western sources and in their full context, rather than out of context as the Western media presents this to the public. Now, now you can see the rest of the story. We'll have to keep an eye on all of this. If you see Russia begin to really use its manned military aviation heavily, with more or less with impunity over Ukraine, it's because Ukraine ran out of air defense systems. Uh, to, to pose a credible threat to Russian military aviation. 
and Russian commanders feel that the risk is low enough to carry out missions further and further away from their own lines. That day is coming. It's just a matter of when. And in the meantime, Russia can sustainably use these Garan-2 drones to carry out devastating attacks, crippling Ukrainian infrastructure without uh, risking its manned military aviation in the process. So this is a, an area where Russia clearly has the advantage, and as time goes by, that advantage will only grow. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share. Think about subscribing. It's free to do. It helps the channel grow. If you're watching this on YouTube, please check the video description below for other places you can find and follow my work. All of my YouTube videos are automatically backed up on Odyssey and Rumble. I am on Telegram and also back on Twitter. The links to, to both are in the video description below. Also in the video description below are all of the links that I referenced in this video, as well as for ways you can help support my work. I do not monetize my YouTube channel. If you see an ad, please skip it because it's not doing me any good. If you do want to help support my work, please do so through Buy Me A Coffee, through Patreon, and also through PayPal. To everyone who has been helping out, whether you're donating month to month, one-time donations, or even if you're just helping share my work with others, I, I greatly appreciate all of that support. I couldn't do this without that support. So thank you. And as always, thank you for watching.